Hey everybody, it's Derek Kamarn from CodeOpinion.com. Which software architecture is the most solid and future-proof? Is it clean architecture, hexagonal architecture, or onion architecture? Do I think there's a right answer? Let's put it this way. No, I do not. And that was the question posed on Reddit. But the thing that kills me is this post in a vast majority of the comments, if they understood the underlying reason of what these architectural styles are trying to solve, and if you have that problem, this post and the comments are pointless. It's really just about understanding the fundamentals. What's your volatility and blast radius and try to control it. After that, it doesn't matter which one of these diagrams you pick. So whether we're thinking about a diagram of clean architecture, onion architecture, hexagonal ports and adapters, it really is just trying to achieve the same thing, which these diagrams kind of illustrate, which is that direction of dependencies and isolating the core. That's what they're trying to achieve, but why? And the why's important because you might not even have the problem they're trying to solve. Before I get to that, I'd like to thank Current for sponsoring this video. Current's an event native data platform that feeds real time business critical data with historical context and fine grained streams from origination to destination, enhancing data analytics and AI outcomes. For more on Current, check out the link in the description. It's really about giving you stability and I'll get more to that, but more specifically what I wanna emphasize here is these are not prescriptions. They're about giving you a mental model on how to handle and manage coupling. And that's the root of all of this. Yet if you go into that Reddit thread and in the comments, try to find the number of times where discussion revolves around that. It's almost non-existent and it's the root of all this. So hexagonal, clean, onion, they're all trying to teach you, teach you the exact same thing and kind of force you down a path where appropriate, the uh, dependency direction, stability boundaries, cohesion of that core logic in the middle there, what your actual business, the capabilities of your system, separation from volatile concerns, and adapters for infrastructure. What does that all mean? When you think on the fringe here, you think about adapters of, or IO related to potentially UI or your web framework, infrastructure concerns like your databases, cloud SDKs, external APIs that you have to call, message brokers, ORMs, auth providers, all of these things are separated from your core because you want stability. It's not that your core can't have dependencies. You just don't want volatile dependencies that are going to then affect your core. Meaning if you have a dependency that has a high rate of change, if that change occurs, then it affects your core. You want your core to be stable. Why? Because that's actually where most of the value lives in your capabilities of what your actually system does. That's where your business logic lives. And you don't want external things that are volatile affecting you to have to change that. So if I jump back to these diagrams, if I look at clean architecture and I have our entities where our actual business logic lives and use cases which are invoking those, our entities don't rely on anything. Same thing when I'm looking at kind of the onion architecture of our domain model and then we have domain services and use cases. If anything changes to the outside of domain model, it's unaffected by it. This is afferent and efferent coupling. I've done so many different videos related to this. I'll put a link in the description to an older one that really is defining this afferent and efferent coupling. And the same thing with goes with ports and adapters here, which is a little bit, I think, more confused by people. If you're living in, say, for example, like C Sharp land, a port can, is nothing more than a contract. It can really just be an interface that you're defining and your adapters are your concrete implementations of that. Your application is just basically using interfaces as a way to expose what can be implemented. And you got inbound and outbound. But really nothing more here is we're just trying to create some isolation. Now let me jump into a simple code example to illustrate this. Because like I mentioned at the beginning, blast radius matters. Obviously, context matters. The degree of coupling matters. So let's use the example of when an order is placed, we send out an email confirmation. So I have this order confirmation with what I'm doing. I'm going to be using AWS SES to send out that email. So I'm using the AWS SDK. I'm actually injecting it here, SES, along with my database, my order context. So when an order placed event occurs, we're handling that. Say like off a message broker, this gets invoked. I'm pulling out the order from the database and then just using the Amazon SES API directly to send out the confirmation email. Is there anything wrong with this? Is there anything necessarily wrong with using the AWS SDK directly? No, not in this simple example, not at all. Why? Because I know that SDK is not volatile at all. And two, blast radius. There really isn't any. I have one usage in my simple example. 
However, in your context, it may matter. How many different locations are you, you have a usage of the SES SDK or some other third dependency that you have that is volatile or not? That's why it matters. Do you have 10 usages of something or a thousand of something? But typically, when you see people use these architectural patterns as a prescription, this is what we get into. We get some definition of an I email sender. Then we have some implementation. In my example here, this SES email sender, where then it's injecting the Amazon uh, SES, doing the exact same thing, making the requests. Then rather, in our order confirmation, instead, we're injecting this email sender, not SES or the AWS SDK directly, and then calling that. But for my particular usage in this case, this serves no value at all. All I've done is add useless indirection in this simple example. However, maybe in your context, if you think about a dependency you have, maybe you have hundreds of usages. So if you depended directly on that API or those types, your application service or layer could be so coupled to that, it would be very hard to change if that dependency made a change meaning you have now a higher blast radius. So maybe you would want to contain that as my sec second example there. So really what you need to be thinking about in coupling is how many things depend on something and what's the likelihood or the risk of that thing changing? And if it's high or low, and if it does change, how much pain are you gonna feel? But what's usually lacking in any of these conversations, which are also generally not even talking about coupling, and even that's root, is you have to be talking about cohesion. Cohesion and coupling are kind of like the yin yang, especially when you're talking about maintainability. So cohesion, the degree of which elements inside a module belong together. But you can think of cohesion in different ways. And the problem is people get fixated on thinking about it from the technical aspect. So for example, if you're thinking about clean hexagonal onion architecture, people start thinking about organizing the code around technical concerns. So you have all these repositories or services all together in the same spot. Or you're thinking about primarily about a very large schema, very large database, and you're really driving everything based on entities. So for example, if you think about a customer, let's say in a system that's related to shipping goods, you may think, okay, well, there's orders, invoices, payments, interactions, tax IDs, preferences, notifications, different contacts. There isn't just one concept of a customer. Likely there's the concept of that customer in various forms in different parts of your system. Maybe you do have some CRM portion that has the context, how you're interacting with them, their different preferences. But actually when you're dispatching their shipments, their orders, you have those actual orders. The notification rules and how you alert them by email or SMS text message on where the shipment is, like you've probably experienced with other e-commerce and retailers. The accounting side of getting the invoices, their payments, different tax IDs. There isn't just one singular idea of a customer. There's multiples of them. So for cohesion, it's not just you're having cohesion around the idea of a customer. No, it's really about the capabilities within given parts of your system. Now let's jump to some comments because there's a thread between them. I think they're more or less represent the same idea. Abstract away from external dependencies because you never know. You never know. That's not a reason to create useless indirection and abstractions. Create them when you actually need to, like my example. It depends on your blast radius. All of them should be taken as suggestions, not blueprints. Absolutely. And this comment, specifically the last part, having a well-defined design and following it to the letter, no complications. So as long as you're not using it as a prescription. If you're pre predominantly in a CRUD app, do you just need to follow clean architecture and a template because you're doing CRUD? That is absolute insanity. I do understand the argument for consistency around what you're following. However, realize that you're going to be putting yourself in a harder spot to make changes when you're making things more complicated, adding more indirection when you do not need it. At the end of the day, this is really about having a high cohesion around capabilities, segregating that, and then managing coupling within that and around that. That's what's gonna give you the future proofing or maintainability of any system. So hopefully I explain myself why I think this question and all the comments around it are kind of pointless because one, they don't really even talk much about coupling because that's root cause. If you're managing that, you understand it, 
the whole rest of these conversations is pointless. My favorite part, get in the comments and let me know your thoughts on this. Are you using it to a letter, to a T? What are you doing? Are you using clean architecture? I know there's so many people that advocate it or templates to use it. I'm still kind of lost on why, if you understand, again, the fundamentals, but I do get consistency. So get in the comments and let me know your thoughts. And thank you to everybody that supports my channel. I really do appreciate it. If you want to support my channel, the link's in the description on how to join. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to get in the comments. And please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.